Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Makes me look like I'm doing. Should we all focus up here on the, uh, on the big screen that we have here? Please make sure you can see the screen because when uh, Ms. Dempsey talks to you about Aspen, you can't see the screen, you're not going to be able to see what she's doing uh, on that screen. So please uh, make sure you have a good view of the screen. If you get an open house schedule or if you haven't gotten directions for Aspen yet, the directions for Aspen are back there on the table and our athletic directors passing out uh, the open house, the blank open house schedule. So if you didn't get a blank open house schedule, Mr. Giorgio over there will hand you one. He's not paying attention. So raise your hand if you didn't get an uh, open house schedule. Peter? Okay. First of all, thank you all for coming tonight. Welcome back to Grange High School, some of you. And uh, welcome to, uh, to some of you for the first time. How many of you have a first time ninth graders at Greenwich High School? Oh wow, okay, all right. And that's amazing. I remember when I first walked into this building, I was a member of the class of 1971 and we had we walked into this building and we went two years to the old high school and one year here, and it was just an amazing feeling to walk into this building and see this great space. And uh, your children are using this space extremely well. So uh, not right now, ninth graders don't have any open time, but they will in the future. And so this is where they will come. If they have open time, they can use the student center, which is where we are, or they can use the media center or they can go into any of the learning centers. Your children do not have opens right now, but they will. Because um, we're gonna be teaching them freedom with responsibility as they go through the grades, so that when they get to college, when they get there, and it's gonna come faster than you think, when they get to college, they all know how they handle their free time. So that's the whole point of our, of our schedule and that whole open time thing. But again, welcome to Grange High School. I am Ralph Mayo, I've been the principal for the last six years. Before that, I was the interim superintendent of schools. Before that, I was the principal of Eastern Middle School. And before that, I was here for 26 years as a teacher, coach, and administrator. I know this building better than I know my own home, unfortunately. The building's in better shape than my own home. But uh, I love it here, I love this building, I love what our students are able to do here. Our students are amazing, all of them. And uh, they're gonna, you, you guys are gonna enjoy your four years here. But my big message to you, and I'm gonna turn the mic over to uh, uh, our student, uh, I mean our senior class president in a minute. Get your kids involved, somehow. Get them involved in this high school. Doesn't matter how. It could be a club, it could be a, a sporting team, it could be Whatever, but get them involved. Once they're involved, they're gonna do better than if they were not involved, let's put it that way. Uh, lots of studies on how schools and how children connect to schools, and once a child's connected, everything's gonna go well for you. The other thing I'm gonna tell you about is, uh, I'm gonna tell you about open house. Before that, I want you to go home and tell your child to get up to their, or down to their guy, their school counselor, meet their school counselor, the person they're gonna be with for the next four years, the person that needs to get to know them, so that when they do get to senior year, I know you think it's a long time away, but when they do, that school counselor is gonna know them and is gonna be able to write a, a letter of recommendation based on their knowledge of your child. So please tell you, they may not need their school counselor, but please, if they haven't met them yet, please have them go introduce themselves. It's the best thing they can do. Okay, um, we sent to you a letter about open house. Now, open house can be treacherous, and that's just getting into the building. So, what I wanted to uh, talk to you about tonight, we sent you the schedule for open house. So you should be here in this uh, this space by 6.30. I'm 
I'm gonna talk at 6.30 again, along with our PTA presidents, and then we're gonna send you off to class. Now, if that schedule is filled out, you're gonna, you're gonna have a nice, easy time getting from class to class. It's not gonna be a problem. If it's not filled out, and that's your child's job to fill out their schedule, then you're gonna have to ask somebody, you're gonna miss the first period, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be as smooth as it could be. So please, take that blank schedule home, Ask your child to fill it out. It is day A, so it's blocks one through six on day A, and then on day B, blocks seven and eight. They know what, you, what I'm talking about. You don't have to know. They know what I'm talking about. So they're gonna fill out their schedule, day A, one through six, day B, seven and eight. If you plan on driving to this high school on that night, remember, there's going to be over, over a thousand people here that night. So, if you plan on driving and you think you're gonna park here, um, come early. Six, uh, 5.45 would be my suggestion. If you come any later than that, then you may not be able to park at, on this site. We're running shuttle buses from Central Middle School to the high school on the half hour, I think it is, and that might be a better way to go. If you could possibly walk here, if you live close enough to walk, do that. If you can carpool, that's more better, as my boss used to say. So do those three things. If you're gonna drive, get here early. You can go over to Central, park there, take the shuttle bus, or walk here, okay? So find a friend tonight so you can carpool. Because remember that you're not going to be the only grade here. The 12th, the senior parents will be here as well. Okay? So that's my, my open house thing. Does anybody have a question about open house before we move on? All right. All right, we're going to introduce our PTA president, Lisa. Monica, you want to come up? She's our other co-PTA president. Welcome to ninth grade meeting. Um, what Mr. Mayo neglected to tell you was that if you're a first time ninth grade parent here and you've never been in the building, open house is not the place or time to come for the first time because it will be like that old Ikea commercial where the ladies running out of the Ikea with the bags, yelling, start the car, start the car. You'd be running out of the building too with, what, 1,400 sets of parents all at once. Um, and he also forgot to tell you that you should put on your running shoes or your walking shoes and bring your pedometer because you'll probably put on at least a few thousand steps. Um, that being said, PTA, we are here for Ralph, we're here for the administration. Our main goal is to raise money, as much money as possible, to give back to the school for curriculum enrichment, teacher outreach, teacher grants, uh, new equipment for the school. We've already spent about $40,000, give or take. We purchased um, four new treadmills for the fitness center. We purchased two ellipticals. We purchased four new monitors throughout the common areas. A couple of them are in the office. We have so much more to do. So for those of you that we sort of harassed when you walked in, Thank you so much. If you haven't donated, please do. If you haven't picked up your incentives, please do. But we can't do what we do without funds. So that's our main goal. So we have a couple um, fundraisers. This is our biggest one. We have Summer Fair coming up in January. That's a camp, uh, meet, like a, I don't know how to describe it, camp information session. Um, great opportunity for the kids looking for summer jobs next year. Um, and then our other big event is our Paint the Town Red uh, Parent Social. It's a parent-only night. We're gearing away from um, a country club this year. We're going to the Village at the Wheel in Stamford. We have the fifth floor all to ourselves, floor to ceiling windows, full open bar, um, lots of fun, lots of uh, fabulous live and silent auction items. 
So please look out for tickets come January and get your tickets while you can. It's a lot of fun. We usually sell out um, and we have so many good things in the works already for that. So please save the date for that. That's April 4th, 2025. And I think the last thing I wanna mention for PTA is if you have not gotten a college book, and for those of you that are new ninth grade parents, the college book is a culmination of last year's class that graduated all the schools that were applied to, all the test scores, all the GPAs, everything, no names, just data. And if you can see if your kid wants to go to say Merrimack, or if your kid wants to go to Harvard, you can look on the book and see those schools and see what the average GPAs are, what the average test scores are, so you can get an idea. If your kid's, you know, a 1.2 GPA, he's probably not getting into Harvard. But if he's 3.2, 3.8, you know, whatever it is, you can get a feel for what it is in that book. So it's a really great, great opportunity that the PTA sort of took on a few years ago. So um, Maureen is there selling those books, so make sure you get one of those as well. And if anybody, does anybody have any questions about anything PTA-wise? No. Okay. We'll turn it back over to Ralph. Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you haven't done already, please join the PTA. Uh, the PTA is more about uh, giving the school funds to, uh, for our use. It's about uh, working in this building with us. Um, that happens every day. There's uh, volunteers in all the houses, volunteers up in the media center. So if you are interested, please, please join. We have uh, big events coming up that the PTA will need help with. So please join the PTA and support the school. Without the PTA, we would not be the high school that we are. Um, Maeve Carey is a senior at Grand High School. She's the president of the senior class, and she's going to talk, talk a little bit about her experiences while a student at Grand High School. Maeve. summer really is over and we're already three weeks into the school year. I can remember the first time I walked into the student center. It was both terrifying and exhilarating. Freshman year me was a totally different person. I was shy and very scared for what was yet to come. If you told me then that I would be class president, I would have laughed. <laughs> but since then, I've grown so much and I can thank my GHS experiences for this growth. Despite its large size, GHS isn't as big and scary as it seems. This is my fourth year serving as a class officer, and one of student government's main goals is building a, com a strong community. Encourage your student to reach out to their classmates and faculty to take advantage of all the great opportunities GHS has to offer. I currently participate in both student government and theater, both leadership positions. Sometimes you find your niche where you least expect. Additionally, freshmen have a lot of resources to assist them with a the positive transition to high school level classes, but also there are a number of resources which help support each student to find a way to belong in the larger GHS community. Whether your student is in the arts, plays a sport, is in student government, has a specific academic interest, or something else, there's no shortage of opportunities here. And while I have your attention, of course, I feel obligated to mention, encourage your students to get involved with student government and theater arts. Uh, thank you for your time, best of luck to your students, and I hope you enjoy your night. Maeve is uh, modest. Maeve was the star of our uh, show last, uh, last spring, Oklahoma, and she was amazing in that play, amazing. And she's only a junior, so God knows what uh, role she's gonna get this year as a senior. And she's been a member of our, our choral program for the last four years, and now the president of the senior class, part of our student government. So um, again, getting involved, as Maeve said, is, it was a key to, to her success. So uh, next up, speaking about involvement, is our Dean of Student Life, 
he's going to be talking about our code of conduct, but also about um, student activities and how you keep involved in one of our uh, clubs. Pull it close, like this. Wonderful. So you can follow directions. So welcome. How's everybody doing? Okay. You're going to get a significant amount of information. Don't worry. Because behind you, the website holds said significant amount of information. The website is your friend. Please refer to it often. If you have questions, many of the questions that you may ask are going to be located there. One of the first things I would like you to direct it to is Dempsey. If you go under the information, we're going to move left to right. Okay? Do you just information? If you click down to handbook and school policies, okay, our entirety of our school handbook is located online. So it has all the little breakouts as you go down, please, uh, Ms. Dempsey. For that, including it is our Cardinal Rules and our newly minted Code of Conduct. That was put together this summer for students and parents. So that way they understand the rules and regulations of the school and that it, these things are not arbitrary. So that is something that has been put together um, with the district. So that is up there for you. Please take a look at this. There is a significant amount of information there that you can, can um, gather. Another thing in terms of information, please make sure that your emails are accurate. Um, I spoke to the 12th grade parents. Make sure the one that's in there is not the one if you have come up through the Greenwich Public School System from kindergarten. Make sure it's the one that you check often. So the AOL.com could probably go. Okay. Um, if you need to change your email, please email the house office. They will take care of that for you. It's going to be very important. A lot of information that we like to get out to both you and the students, we utilize email for that. So please make sure that is, that is accurate. Um, we also put out a bi-weekly parent link, which is sent to your emails, that also has a significant amount of information for you. So please make sure you read those. I think we've topped it out at 250. We're looking for 300 this year to get uh, for our readership up there. Uh, the next thing I want to direct you to is that under student life. Okay. Student life is the Office of Student Life. That is what I am uh, in charge of along with student activities. So it's myself and the five assistant deans. So we are there as a support for both you and your students. Um, most of the moniker you've heard, if you're going to the dean's office, you are in trouble. Yes, unfortunately, sometimes that, that, is, that is the cross that we have to bear. But that being said, we also do it in a supportive fashion. Our goal is to make sure that everybody in this community feels safe and, and has access to an excellent time here in their four years at Greenwich High School. So if you're receiving a call from either myself or one of the assistant deans, it may not necessarily be negative. Okay, maybe us reaching out to see how we can best support. So please work with us on that. We have a school of 2,700 kids. We have a house system for a reason. We try to bring those 2,700 into a smaller setting. Your students will have a house administrator all four years, a school counselor, an assistant dean, and all the houses do have social workers and school psychologists. So there is a significant amount of help there for the students. Access it. There is no wrong question to ask. If you are a first year parent here at the high school, it could be a little scary, but we're, we're here together to help make sure that at the end of the day, the students who graduate here are truly ready for a world that we don't know what's up there yet. Okay, that is part of our job as educators, and we work together. Nobody that I've met has gotten to this field. We're like, man, I can't wake up and I'll fail kids today. Never happens. Okay, we want the best for, for the students, and that is our job. So, one of the things that you're going to find here, just to piggyback off what Mr. Mayo said, is you want to encourage your students to get involved. I think we have over 120 clubs that students can get involved with. So please, take a look at it with, with your child. See what they're interested in. Try a couple clubs. Doesn't mean that they have to commit, but certainly the more they get out there and the more they, they find their niche and they find um, what they want to do, it's going to be very helpful. The same thing with our course study guide. We have a significant amount of courses that students can try. Right? We want to give them the opportunities in the safety and security of this building to try those things, to make sure that they are ready for the next step in their journey. What else do I want to add? You guys are ninth graders, right? So I'm not talking about parking yet. Let's get back. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all. We have homecoming coming up. 
Okay, September 28th is going to be the dance, uh, and the following week we do a number of different activities, um, another different uh, themes. I think one of the days like USA Day, one is uh, students dressed like a teacher, teacher dressed like a student, which would be interesting. Um, and then it all culminates with our, with our homecoming game. So please, tell your students to get involved early and often. And again, if you have any and all questions, please reach out to your house teams. They are there to help. They're an excellent resource. And welcome and well, congratulations on your, uh, on your, for your journey here. Appreciate it. It's my pleasure to introduce our athletic director, Ms. Pete Giorgio. Peter. Peter will be too shy to say this, like he's ever been shy in his entire life. But last year, this school won eight uh, total county and state titles, and did so the year before as well. Both years named the Fairfield County uh, top school, Fairfield County for Athletics. So, Peter. Thank you, Ralph. Good evening, everyone. I don't think I need to say any more. Ralph said it all for me, but um, my name is Mr. Giorgio, Peter Giorgio. I'm the athletic director here. Behind us, we also have the tab, like Student Life, on our website uh, under athletics. And under the athletics, we have our homepage, which is where you're going to go to register your uh, child. If you go towards the bottom of the page, scroll down, Ms. Dempsey, under registration, the registration tab is always active. We use a program called Final Forms. The way that works is we try to simplify it for you guys. There's all these platforms that you have to get used to. If you have a Google email, you could just one step log in. You can log in, you create an account for yourself, and then you'll create an account for your student, your child. And uh, at that point, three times a year, registration opens up. You'll be able to register your kid for uh, a sport. We're fortunate enough to have about 42% of the freshman class participate in a freshman activity. So that's a huge number, about 342 kids. Um, we do offer a lot of activities through the CIAC on sponsored sports, but we also have other activities that are not sponsored by the CIAC, but do fall under the privilege of our, our athletic department, such as fencing, bowling, um, sailing, water polo, skiing and such. We do open up registration for the winter in the, around the second week of October. However, we do close it early. And a couple of things that you're gonna have to look at is you have to get in our information through final forms. We need a current physical. You guys have some forms to sign as well as a code of conduct and so does your kids. It reflects the one that Mr. Pereira spoke about earlier. Um, other form of communication, can you go under Teams, Ms. Dempsey? Under Sports U? So if your child does a sport, the main communication throughout the day is a, a platform called Sports U. It does not house any personal information. You set it up on your phone. You could join a bunch of our teams are up there and that's how communication goes through to you and your kid for day-to-day -day stuff. We do not publish our practice schedules anymore. We don't like to leave a roadmap of where our kids are going to be. So all the kids' practice schedules are on Sports U. Game schedules are out there. Um, and then Final Forms is, again, your registration platform. I'll be around for a little bit later if you have any questions. If not, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Mayo to hopefully conclude your evening. Or maybe not. Not even close yet. Sorry, guys. Thank you, Coach. It's my pleasure to introduce our two uh, school resource officers, Officer Reich, Officer Wallace, come on down. All right, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Fred Reich. I've uh, been an SRO here for the last six years. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a tab. Um, you know, maybe sometime in the future, but um, we're actually here today to talk to you about our role here in the building. So hi, I'm Officer Wally. Um, my real name's Chris Wallace, but everyone calls me Wally, so you can just call me Wally. Um, I've been a school resource officer now for four years, and we really have three main roles in this building. 
The first, obviously, is to keep all of your students here safe and, and all of the staff here safe as well. Um, so that's our primary function. We are here every day from before school ends until even after school's over. Um, our third function here is we're informal educators. Um, we'll be guest speakers in plenty of classes, whether it's a law class, it could be um, all 10th grade health classes we actually go into and speak to kids about laws that pertain to them as 16 and 17 year olds. And our last function here is informal mentors. Um, also, Rice was involved in our wrestling program here. I'm the head coach for the boys track team. And um, we just do that as a way for the kids to connect us so we're not the scary police officers in the building. We're actually someone that they can come to and, as our name says, be a resource for them. Some other things we have done here is we have a therapy dog program here at the school. Um, so we have about 10 or 15 volunteers that come in throughout the school year with a therapy dog. The school can be stressful. And it's just here for to you know be a positive light in the kids' days. So there's just some of the things that we're here for. Again, we're here all day. We're not just a resource to the students, but also a resource to you. So if you ever have any questions, please reach out to us, all right? And again, um, we don't have a tab um, or a website, but we do have an Instagram. So if you ever want to give us a follow, please do, all right? Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Mayo. I've been, they've been speaking for the last two weeks and they haven't brought the Instagram account once. I knew it was coming. Anyway, uh, our final uh, presenter tonight, uh, Lisa Dempsey, she's one of our uh, business teachers, but she's also one of our tech coaches, and she's gonna run you through Aspen. Now Aspen can do a lot of things uh, for you, attendance, grades, all that good stuff, but if you, uh, if you know how to use it. So tonight we're gonna give you a little, if you know how to use it, this is a refresher. If you don't know how to use it, here we go. Welcome to the high school. Um, this is a phenomenal place. I've actually, this is my 29th year in this building and it is really an awesome place to be. Um, the one thing we want to you to know as teachers is that we are partners in this educational journey with your kids. And it is super helpful when you help us as teachers give them the guidance of what to check, but not be the helicopter where if they make a slip up, it's okay especially ninth graders. They're navigating a brand new territory of high school courses. So please cut them a little bit of a slack. And I want to go over some of the things in Aspen to point out to you to hopefully make it a little bit um, more sensible to you. So when we're taking a look, first of all, if you don't have access to Aspen, um, Take a look at the Greenwich Schools Public Schools website, and if you just type in the info and type in parent portals, a lot of the information is in here as well. And Aspen is our school database, so all the information with as far as grades, contact information, doctors, transcripts, all that information is stored in Aspen. So in order to get to Aspen, I always make it a favorite on my bookmarks, but if you just Google Aspen Greenwich, it will pop up and you will have this screen. It is a what's called single sign-on, so you do not have a separate password. Once you are logged in through your Google account or your email account, when you click on that single sign-on, it will get you to the login screen. So your parent portal will look like this. And in this front screen here, you will have the information of any announcements will occasionally pop up there the to-do, and what is up, what is overdue if there is anything, what is upcoming today, what is upcoming this week, and you will have the courses, some of the items listed there. There are also shortcuts um, on the web links over here that will help you um, access other things as well. But when you scroll down, you will see a recent activity. So anything that is, you can set it to either the last seven days, you can set it to today only, set it to the last 30 days. 30 days gets overwhelming because your students have six to seven classes. That's a lot of information. So I wouldn't suggest 30 because it can get a little overwhelming. Um, and But you will see what their, what their assignments are, what their grades are, and I want to go over how some of that looks. My info is the first tab on the top toolbar. 
And in my info, as Mr. Pereira was pointing to, as far as contact, if you go down to the contact side tab, you will see some information about that that you have there. And you want to check that information because the information that is in there is the way we're going to contact you. So you do want to make sure that this is up to date. But when you take a look at my details, you will see, again, another place to look at your address. Even has some photos of kids. Our test student doesn't exist, so we don't have a photo, although I think we can maybe do something about that. Um, another thing that is super helpful is your student's current schedule, because our schedule, when you, unless you live in this building and understand our rotation, it can be somewhat confusing. So it will give you the schedule on the A through H, and it will also give you the rotation. Our test student is not fully scheduled right now. He's only scheduled, or she's only scheduled for three classes, but it does give you the time of day. So if you need to schedule some appointments, it would be nice if you were be able to schedule during maybe a learning center and not during an academic class if it is possible to be done. But this rotation will be able to help you out with that. The other tab I wanna point out to this is um, the attendance tab will give you your student's attendance on a day-to-day -day basis. You will also have um, to take a look to see what it is. Our student has not been absent yet. So that's the My Info tab. The next tab to take a look at is Academics, and this is where your student's courses are going to be listed. So all the courses that your student is enrolled in will be listed um, on this tab. All of these blue um, course names are all hyperlinks. So if you want to take a look at my marketing class, take a look at the, and all of the course pages will look the same on the front page. It'll have the teacher's name, what classroom they are in. It will give you an attendance summary here as well. And something to look at is the categories of how the students get graded. And it will give you, because all the teachers will use categories, whether it's assessments or formative assessments, summative assessments, classwork, homework, what you see there will be what their average is in each of the categories. I have two categories set up. But if you want to see individual assignments of how they got there, when you click on the assignment tab, this is going to give all the assignments that, is, that have been graded or been entered into Aspen, and you can see how your student does it. There is one thing I really want to point out and stress to you because it's something that it's the way Aspen is set up, and there's nothing we can do to change it. But what I want you to be very aware of is on the right side there, it'll be total points for each assignment. You'll notice that I have some on the bottom of just one point assignments. And if you have a one out of one, it's really not a whole lot of, to, to do there. But when you take a look at, let me look at a different course because it shows a little bit better. So in this investments course that they're taking, it looks like, oh my gosh, they got a 50 on it. But that 50 is only a total of four points out of all of the assignments that the student has. So four points, even they freak out when they see 50%, oh my gosh, but if they only have two points lost. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these scores and the percentages, look at how many points each is worth and not the percentage of the score, okay? Please just take a look at total points because that's really what is going to have more of an impact than just that 50% that's there because we grade on what's called category total points here, which means assignments have different variety of points depending on what it is they are doing. The more points, the more heavily it counts into their grade. The fewer points, the, the less it impacts they're great. So I always tell students, if you need to make things up, go for the large point values. That's what's going to have a big impact. If you have to make something up and it's one point and other things are 20, go for the 20. That one point will have very little impact on your grade. So just please keep that in mind when you're looking at that. Um, so again, you will see all of the assignments that are there in each of the courses that your student has. Um, the one thing right now, it defaults to marking period one, and when we get to marking period two, 
you can change it to marking period two. And if you also want to see by category, this time of year, it's very, there are very few grades in a lot of courses because we've just started. So everything has a really major impact. It looks like it does because there's not a lot there. We're only on, what, day 12 of being here. We have, on average, within each course, about 32 days that we meet on a six time a cycle class. So over those 32 days that we actually are in class, there's going to be many assignments in there. Um, but right now, because there's not that many, each one looks like it's worth a whole lot more than it actually is because it's not spread across many points right now. So as you get into the year, you will be seeing more and more go in there. And the other thing to remind you is that this is live. So as a teacher enters a grade, your student will see it and you will see it. And I have found nothing gets a response faster in Aspen than a zero. It's all of a sudden, it's the, the emails come, you've been trying to talk to them, don't worry, don't worry, I got it, I got it. You put a zero in and they're like, okay, here it is. So it is a, it's a way we communicate. And one of the things I wanted to go over is we have what's called some codes that are universal throughout the building. We have a code called TBG, to be graded, which means the teacher has it, they haven't finished grading all of them yet. So that's like, no worries, you've got it, you've done it, the teacher will grade it. NS is something that you want to worry about because that means they did not submit something that they should have. That's the one to say, hey, did you get this done? Please make sure it gets in. We also have a code called AE, which is absent excused. Students are out of class. We are not going to penalize them when they are absent from class. So when they get the work done, it shows up as a zero to say, reminder, you gotta get it done, but when it gets turned in, it will not be penalized when it's absent excused. Now, absent unexcused is a different story. That's when you cut class. We don't want that to happen, but if you decide you wanna hang out in the lunchroom and you wanna hang out in the student center during lunch instead of going to class and you are in the building, or you did not get called out, that zero stays and cannot be made up. So we really stress the importance of being in class every day because when you cut class, those that work stays as a zero, cannot be made up. And the other to others that will be in there is, is exempt. We understand that sometimes life happens and that there are not some activities that teachers will be able to exempt your students from. And EX means that they are not going to have to make up that work and that they are being exempt and it does not count against them in any way. Those are universal codes in everybody's grade book. So if you see those letters, that's what they mean. And your teachers next week when you come back for a back to school night will explain those as well. Um, the other thing I wanna show you which is super helpful and I think for planning and organization wise is also is the calendar feature. And that calendar feature up top will give you all of the assignments and it gives you a visual as to what the layout was of when assignments were due and when they were done. Um, and each course has its different color code on there. So you can check that for the month, which can be a little overwhelming. You can check it by the week and it can also be done by the day. I find the week to be most helpful because it sort of lays things out to say where do I need to spend my time and what have I done. And it could also show you, you know, when they tell you, oh my gosh, I've got three tests today, they're gonna be able, you're gonna be able to see that in there as well. Um, so that is, I just wanna make sure that I think I've covered everything that I need to. Are there any questions that anyone may have that I could possibly answer while you're in this room and you can actually see this screen? Yes? Uh, is one point was the same regardless of the type of assessment or is a point of the The categories have different averages. So maybe a homework could be worth 10% of the overall grade and assessments might be 90%, and that's in some of our math classes do that. Or some classes, classwork counts as 30%, and assessments may count as 70%. That will vary by course. 
And that will be on the syllabus that, that, are, that are usually posted in school. Yes. So Aspen is our database and it keeps all of the records. Schoology is the way we give information and collect our schoolwork and post work for students. I was going to show you that tonight, but we've had some technical difficulties, so I cannot show you that tonight. It's being worked on overnight, then hopefully tomorrow we're gonna to be fully up and running. But that's, Schoology is the way information flows from the student to the teacher to be able to collect work or post assignments. This is, this is gonna give, give you the grades. Mm -hmm. They'll, the teachers will have the work posted in Schoology and they can always email their teachers to say, what am I missing? And if they, they usually know ahead of time, so they should be proactive and find out what they're missing before they go versus after they go. Proactive is usually the best way to go. Yes, sir. Right. How, how do you get like, in, you know, like in credentials? For so in order to do that, if you go into the parent portal page on the website, I believe that it is posted there as to how to get into Aspen. Um, if you send the email to parent underscore portal, it's on there, and they will be able to get you the credentials you need to be able to log in. Any other questions? Sure. So the notification, if you go up into my info and go down to notifications on the left, so my info and notifications on the left, you can have an attendance um, of, of any entry into attendance of whether they are tardy or absent. Tardy means they were late for class, absent means they were not in class. The grade notification is down here and you can set a grade threshold. Please don't set it high, give your kids some space. I'm not saying set it to zero, I'm not saying set it to 50, but don't put it at 99 because they, they need to breathe. The parents can view Schoology, but they can't submit, and they don't see discussions, but they can see the work that is being distributed. And you can only access this through the website, right? Not no, Schoology has an app, and Aspen, you can go into, if you type in Aspen Greenwich, there is a, um, an app view, but you can also go to the full site, so either one, but not, there's not, Schoology has its app, but Aspen does not have an app per se. When you just type in Schoology Greenwich, it will go automatically into app mode. Into school size, I should say phone, phone size, and it changes, but you can go into the full site as well off the of phone. Any other questions? Google Classroom is also being used by some I'm sorry? Google Classroom is being used by some teachers, but Schoology is what everything needs to be posted in because the Schoology calendar will, will house everything. But some teachers are using Google Classroom and they integrate that into Schoology. Any other questions that I can answer? Yes. Yes. Only when there, we have state testing, they have to use the Chromebooks. They have to use their Chromebooks for state testing. Any other questions that I can answer? Yes. That's when you have your conversation with your student and say, please bring it up so I can see what you did well, and anything back. Correct. Yep. Any other questions that I can answer? And that's it. All right. You can always reach out. Like I said, the parent, the, the access is on there, but it's the again. If you're they're, they're learning, they're ninth graders. They'll get there. And the support are again. Teachers want to work with you to be able to get your students to their full potential. And Aspen is just one way. To, to sort of stay on top about where they're at. We don't like surprises come great time.
Mrs. Dempsey is an amazing resource to all of us, uh, staff and students. Uh, so thanks, Lee. Appreciate it. Um, I'll go down one of these days. Um, so, folks, that's our presentation for tonight. If you have questions for us, please stay. If you don't have questions, you are dismissed. So thank you again for coming. And like I said, Mr. Giorgio is still here. If you have questions about athletics, uh, Mr. Guerrero is still here. If you have questions about anything like that, Officer Wallace is still here. So come on up if you have a question. Thanks, everyone.